tune there for you. Yeah. A new a new tune off the new record. Uh, that one's called Believe. And it's the uh, that's the closing track off the new record. I know not a lot of people are expecting me to be streaming on a Thursday, but I had a really uh, I had a really great session on Tuesday. And uh, I'll tell you about that real quick. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Good to see everybody, first of all. Always good to see everyone. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm getting some questions already over here in the chat. It's good to see people from Europe and Greece uh, worldwide today, which is great. Steve Newsom says it's Andy. It's the Andy Wood equivalent to Andy Timmons on your way, sweet soul. Boy, that's a big compliment. That's a great tune that Timmons has got. Um, obviously, Timmons has big, been a big mentor and influence over the past, you know, decade. I would say since I met him in Raleigh, but more so over the past five years as we've become. But more, more often, the paths have been crossing. Right. Let me tell you about that session that happened on Tuesday. It was in, in Nashville. There's a term called master session, and 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 it, and I don't know if that's a global thing. I don't know if it's just something that some guys say around town, or if it's something that is actually a thing that, yeah, I, you know, what whatever you want to call it. But basically, that just means a big boy session. That's a, you know, you know, it's going to be a lot of important important people. And uh, the bass player that was on it was sitting next to me. We were tracking. He's played on, you know, freaking Garth Brooks, Gary Underwood, Keith Urban, all this stuff. And Jim Riley's on drums. And uh, Jimmy Wallace is on keyboards. And Carl Miner is on uh, uh, acoustic guitar. And Troy Lancaster's on um, uh, second guitar. And, 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 and it's really great, man. The session, it, we were doing three, three songs. And... Uh, it was inspiring to be around those legends and uh, be, be cutting with those guys. Um, and I don't really know how much, how much liberty I have to talk about the session. So we'll just leave it kind of vague, but we'll just say it's a really, really great opportunity. And um, it, it sparked the idea. That's why a, I couldn't do the live stream on Tuesday and B it kind of sparked the idea for today. It'd be like, how do you succeed in a melodic environment in a session environment? You know, oftentimes we're looking for more chops and more tones and more distortion and more gain. And like the more is the answer. Holy crap. Please give us more. Like, it's like interesting that, you know, what really constitutes a win in a lot of musical environments is how you craft your sound to sit inside the mix and you know how you're how you're sitting with and playing with other folks uh to serve the song to best serve the song and i chose to kind of play this for two reasons one i've never played it i've never played it for anyone so you guys are officially the first people i've ever physically played that song for um so number two it, it's a great idea of how to shift in and out of things within a song without ever flooring it right without ever um uh getting into like chops chops world mr chopserson right uh so there's there's a couple of things to know most music you know that you're going to be working on is very diatonic and it's going to be very inside and uh you know the things that you're going to be you know, I've got the, the halo, obviously, Timmons' sound. It's a great, great delay t that I can um, manipulate with my foot, you know. Some good tone, right? Like, I think that's a really pretty tone. And that's just uh, part of it is this guitar. This guitar has a special switching that I like, and it's not the first most position. That's like the humbucker. It's the next one over. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of gospel y, but it's not quite gospel, right? It's almost the 
it's almost those kind of things, but it's not really. It's somewhere in between a, the Strat and the Tele neck pickup. And 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 I've got three pedals on right now, just three pedals. Um, Wes is chiming in with, hey, Andy, do you have a preferred setting on the back of the SL68? Yeah, wide open. I run it wide open. Um, uh, it looks like he, he erased that comment. Okay, well, we'll see what he chimes back in with. Um, Donald says, I've definitely got some Brent Mason in the play. I mean, I'll always have Brent kind of living within my realm of, of, of playing. Um, Brent will always be part of my DNA. I mean, I, I've got, you know, all of those kind of things. You know, it's like I'm always going to have... You know, it's like I'm always going to have Brent's flavor in my playing, even in the ballad. When I think of Brent melodic playing, it's like the... It's like the neon moon kind of thing. And, and when I think of Brent, you know, playing those. It's very, it, it reminds me of Dan too, you know, the Dan Huff thing, you know, it's like kind of talking about that. You know, it's, it's more humbucker. You know, it's definitely the Dan thing to me is about how you're being rubber bandy in and out of notes. By that, I mean not just playing. It's more like you know, definitely that kind. being that guy too when he's even just playing a fast pentatonic lick I think of So to me, it's like it's it's taking diatonic simple information, right? Which is um, which is just it just being scalar, and I and like when that first tune that I was playing, it's like the Def Leppard chord, really, you know. You need this though. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, sorry. I got got <laughs> I got off track. Um, just talking about like how to play with the. <laughs> With uh, playing simple scale stuff and not sounding like simple scale stuff. things that I use are ornaments really it's like little decorations and little little pieces of flair that sit on it like instead of looking at this this is a skill as a shape based thing that exists in one area I'm kind of seeing I'm seeing this diagonal thing like that's that's the way I'm seeing it, kind of like a diagonal, um, so I can see which way I'm, you know, kind of outlining. lets me see it's like seeing the guitar the roadmap of D major look like this you see now when I understand that the whole the, the, the see the answer guys is really the open strings will tell you what they are right like if e, all every one of these strings is in Oh, the key of D. E's in the key of D. B's in the key of D. Uh, G's in the key of D. D is obviously in there. A is the five. B is the two, right? So, like, I'm seeing uh, every open string tells me what the next answer is. If you know where E is, well, the next fret has to be F, right? Well, you know, E, a minor third up from that is G. E, F, F sharp, G. Um, then we know, if we know where G is, then I can see A and B because those are whole steps. So I'm using G to show me where that is. Well, if I see that, that applies to this as well. If I know where A is, well, B has to be there. If I can see D, I'm not just seeing D. I'm seeing D, E, F sharp. If I see that, I've got G, uh, G, A, B. You know, C is there, C sharp, for if I'm in the key of D, right? You know. So making the guitar elongated is 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 star is number one. Like learning the fretboard is always number one. But I'm going to speak to you guys as if you know where the frets are and what the notes are. Um, number two would be like never letting out of a note, not doing this. <laughs> That's not the answer. Like you want to be every note I'm hanging on to it, even if I've got to go somewhere else. Like in the line. Let's see. Let's get a little bit more hair on it. that line it's very much a Landauism that I've lifted at some point uh, I'm never letting out of that bottom note
The only time I let out if I want the sustain to go away. You know, sustain is so much part of your hands more than it is just the instruments and the gear. See how it, it creates these wonderful overtones and these magical little moments, right? That's that's the the not letting out of the note creates all those beautiful bell like overtones and that clarity and that lovely ringing piano kind of thing, right? So like number three is knowing what the chords are. You got to know what's in the key. You got to know what the song requires, right? So like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the entry to Fast Cars and Freedom. <laughs> Play through that sound. I know that I've got to have a flat seven in there. If I'm gonna play through Believe, which is the tune that I just played through, that's that doesn't have five. That's a major seven, yo. So I need to know what the chords are so I can tr move through them. And then from knowing the chords, I need to be aware of what my, what my thirds are. How that third can change to a six. The, mm, the major seven of six can be the three of the five. everything that I just told you like it's about sitting with each one of these pieces and combining them at the end of the practice session right like the practice this is something that's really important like I, I'm, I can't just sit here and tell you I unload it and down and give it to you like I don't know how that works I, I didn't learn that way but when I think about it I can definitely tell you my process and then it's up to you to go and spend time and practice it to get it under your fingers and where you like it. And, the, and, and that's where your interpretation and your practice, you'll end up with a different sound because you'll like different things that are going on. But what I can tell you is you got to be able to see the guitar without seeing it in blocks, without seeing it in like chunks, right? You've got to be able to see the whole guitar, D major, you know, E flat, whatever it may, may be. Um, whatever key, whatever's going on. Then you got to know the chord changes. You got to know what, what functions within those chords. You know, what is, do you hear that as a, 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 a C sharp half diminished or C sharp diminished? Do you see, hear that as that? Or do you hear that as an A7 first inversion? You know. No, I kind of 
kind of got a little jazzier, right? You know. Now let's hit some of these uh, high points. Um, first of all, I, I hope you enjoyed the uh, I hope you enjoyed the tune. That that tune means a lot to me. It was really kind of the first tune on the new record that was written. I was going through a lot of problems, man. I was going through uh, a lot of problems. My, my 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 granddad had died. My dad died, and things were not good. So you know, I kind of kind of came out of the came out of the dark with that that song. Um, so that was the first kind of thing that, that had launched into the new record, uh, you know, the COVID thing and all the things that were happening at that time. Um, and it kind of laid the groundwork for what I wanted the new record to be. So I hope you enjoyed that. First of all, second of all, um, we've got an amazing lineup for Woodshed, woodshedguitarexperience.com. We have about 40 slots or so. Uh, Steve Morse is coming this year, which is amazing. Uh, Jake Workman, if you love really ripping bluegrass, Jake's going to be there. Ariel Poston, amazing slide player, amazing songwriter, vocalist, is just incredible. Fluff from uh, his channel, Riff Geards Beards, Beards and Gear. I don't know the order. Is it Riffs, Beards and Gear? Is it Beards? riffs and gear i don't know he's in there but fluff's coming and uh it's it, uh, tomo's gonna be there you guys love tomo i love him too man it's exciting to have him there we got the full lineup on the website make sure to pop over there and check it out more you know more things are kind of unfolding every day with uh the schedule this year it's gonna be amazing so so come hang out with us for four days and learn and come out the other side a better guitar player right i know every year i do uh, so second, second of all, if you like what we do here on the channel, you enjoy it, you appreciate all the things, go to patreon.com, $5, throw $5 in the tip bucket. It allows me to buy a six pack, which is fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So the patreon.com thing is, uh, is how you, uh, can, can support the channel. You know, YouTube's kind of, you, you don't really make money off of youtube it's 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 other stuff that that allows me to do the youtube stuff for free right kind of thing um now is that all the housekeeping i think so i think it is i just got back i'm playing through my medium size board i just got back from uh xts uh they they've been building a lot of van halen boards which is really fun uh after doing the van halen video they they had a bunch of van halen uh boards in the in the queue to be built I had them do uh, address something on my acoustic board. I had them do my uh, medium size board, and I noticed that a program switch that I want to uh, I want to address. So, um, anyways, we've got some lovely clinics right around the corner. Uh, that's going to be starting in Charlotte and heading up to the Northeast. So, if you're in the Boston area, the New York area, if you're in Charlotte. I'd love to see you come on out. You can visit andywoodmusic.com to see those dates. They will also be all on my, my socials. So come and hang and uh, be a part of that. Going to be beautiful. Beautiful set of clinics. Um, that's two weeks from now. So two weeks I'll be on that little northeast run. Uh, let's hit some questions in the chat. It's a little almost Cosby-esque. In the chat. Hit the jello in the chat. You can't say that he's he's he didn't do some good stuff. He's he's not good. He did bad things. Um, Dustin Chang, I'm I see you in the chat, and uh, I'm gonna lift lift your spirits even farther by taking some photos of those presets. Uh, line six, if you're watching this and you want me to make some presets for you, I will. A lot of my people want me to make those, so give me a shout. Um, Will you ever make a lesson on connecting cord tissue for us in the third world countries? What's your opinion on caged? Caged is fine. It's not how I see it though. So if you if you if you asking how I see something, I don't really think of it. I guess I guess I'm using caged, but I don't really think of it that way because I'm just seeing as like when I see a cord, I'm seeing how many roots are within one hand's grouping, and then from there, if I invert my fingers and put that root. You know, what all can I, what all is accessible right there? There's my four, there's, you know, two minor, two major, or two major would be over here, you know, kind of, it's like I'm trying to see everything within my grip area. Maybe it, maybe that'd make a good lesson. 
Maybe that would make a good list. Educate, describe, explain your EQ settings from my man Joe Ramirez on the GE7. Yeah, it's actually really simple. Um, I'm dipping. I'm dipping a hundred, a hundred, just by about a decibel. So here's. Let's see. What happened to my tone? What happened? Oh, I came unplugged. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when I dip the tone, uh, here's, here's without it. This is just a hundred set flat. Just a little dip, about a decibel, about a decibel. Cleans up that low end a little bit. Gives me that clarity. And then I have a bump at 400 and a bump at 3K. So around 3K and 400, here's without it. Here's without the EQ. Here's with the EQ. It's really just trying to get the SL to sparkle. Uh, you know, the SL is not a sparkly amp. It's a Marshall, so it's not sparkly. Um, that's how I'm using it. Um, and then when I go to dirt channels, it's not on. You know, it's like, that's what the SL does really well, is it, it gives you brute force. It gives you the hammer. Right, does that thing. Box, obviously the super thick lead tone that I kind of always lean into. That sounds really good. Instant, instant gratification. So that's kind of how I'm using it. The uh, SL is loud and clean and it's not giving me anything. That's how the EQ is involved. EQ is not on on anything except the clean channels. Wes says, hey, do you have a preferred setting for the SL68 Master Volume? And I call that wide open. <laughs> mm, kill it. Now, I am using it into an aux. So I'm not attenuating up at the amp. With live, I've got a fry at power station that I might use. And uh, that might be a thing. I don't know. I haven't messed with the amp live a lot. Donald says, it, it's just like the bluegrass playing. It's the love of music and listening to it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Wes is again asking about the neck humbucker. It's really about the guitar. This is the uh, original prototype, man. 10-year anniversary of this guitar. Well, this thing is... A lot of a lot of miles. Me and this guitar have done. We've been around the world together. We we really have. We've done tours that have been metal. We've done pop country. This has been on the CMAs. This, this guitar has been around, man. It's magic, magic. Um, where do I put Def Leppard as far as melodic? It's at the top. 
I mean, everything they do is at the top. It's at the top. I mean, they are incredible. When it comes to melodic rock and great hooks and just understanding what a hook is, I don't think there's anybody that, that is, I mean, I, here's the deal. I think there's a lot of people, but really boils down to like the Aerosmith, Def Leppard. That just so, they're so hooky. Everything is so melodic too. It's really, really gratifying. Everything goes in a, a comfortable direction, but not always the direction you think it's going to go to, right? It's um, it's like the, uh, what was I listening to the other day? Um, yeah. Was the Aerosmith that starts like that? Uh, I mean, that one, I, I'm trying to play it from memory, but the, which one is that? Uh, is that crying or crazy? I think it's crying, right? <laughs> What's that next chord? And it's weird that the intro does that G thing, but the verses are this. I don't know where it goes. Uh. Yeah, that's a really clever thing. It kind of came to me halfway, right? Where it's like a... The three minor, four, down to one. That is a ripper. I'm gonna learn that. I'm actually gonna go back. And yeah. So, anyways, you know, it's like I guess here's here's the sh here's how I know that's great. <laughs> if, if we didn't need verification from me, because I'm nobody, but like I know it's great because I don't have to have the song playing to be able to play it. <laughs> it's like that's how memorable that thing is, and and that's how like really brilliant it is and well written right uh it, it's really good it's a thing right it, it, and it's like they do those like whole step movements another one is like up with I love 
love this movement. Like they're probably at, at way up at the top for me that I really love. Um, I love the, the how they structure their tunes and and it influences my writing a lot. Like the songs like Copperhead on the new record, starting A. Okay. And it goes to C minor. Okay, cool. Sorry. I'm just, just joking around. Crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the chorus riff from a classical song. Wow, okay. That's cool. Um, let's see. Def Leppard swept up rock radio when they came on the scene. Yeah, but they were able to upgrade their lead guitars. I don't know if it was upgrade. It's just different, right? You know? I think Mutt really brought a lot to the table. Mutt Lang and the production side of it. And, like, that's where the crafting kind of came from. Uh... Yeah. 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 I didn't grow up with on this stuff either, Dustin. Like it's not something that I, uh, I kind of cut my teeth on. It was, it's, it's stuff that I learned later. Like I grew up playing bluegrass, so I didn't really know any of this stuff till I was 20 years old, 19 years old. Um, you know, my, when I discovered electric guitar, all I wanted to listen to was like Eric Johnson and, uh, Steve Morris and Steve, I, the G3, that g3 thing i watched that a hundred million times um 
and just still to this day i'm just in awe <laughs> like it's just so good um but yeah that's 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 it man that's the thing i hope that uh i hope that this uh this live stream kind of gave you an idea of a step-by-step -step process of how to improve your melodic playing i mean step one you got to be able to visualize the fretboard outside of shapes that go up and down they've got to go elongated horizontal right and then step two is like understanding that you can't let out of a note you don't start on one area of the fretboard and then lift your fingers and come down i mean it's like it's about playing um <laughs> You're tying the fretboard together with that stuff, right? It's keeping the fingers down as you're traveling across the fretboard. Step three is knowing that you got you gotta um, understand the chord changes that are in the song, right? If you're playing, then you go to, and the melodies will tell you everything. Uh, gotta understand the chords of the song you gotta be in there and uh know where each chord is coming know what those those chord tones are that are going to make each chord work like when you have if you play a lot of you're gonna get a rub right you know Outline on. I can lead you through it, right? It, that's the that's the one two three and then and then step four i shouldn't even have to say this one goes out the you got to be able to hear what you want to play in your head before you you, you got to be using your ears and your mind first before you even put your hands on the fingerboard so you, you know what you want to hear right like if i want to hear i know Yeah, ah. the function is that a function of too much game? What is that? Uh, how do you keep the fingers down but not have the string noise? It, it's 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 there's you're you're sliding almost always, right? It's kind of the opposite of if you're doing the uh, legato. Thing. 
on those kind of situations. I'm 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 kind of using everything as a as a hammer. Same way with like if I'm alternate picking a lot of stuff. Uh, It's like, it's like, it's like, there is no one way to play the guitar. It's what is your, what are you trying to do at that moment? And what is going to be the hand approach? That's going to be the most conducive to getting something to sustain and sing and be bell like versus playing everything just like flying around on it. Right. Yeah. Aerosmith stole it from classical music. I mean, yeah, I mean like for sure it's, it's totally got the Canon thing, but like, the melody's not like canon at all. Like, it's just the chord progression. And I mean, for that matter, it's like how many billions of songs are 1451 or God Almighty, like 1645 or whatever, right? Like, it's the melody that makes it not canon to me. Like, that's it. Yeah. Andy, are you, are you have your own stuff for sure? Oh, okay. I see. EJ and AT thing about your playing, but also hear the Neil Sean and your melodic playing the bins. Oh, thanks, man. Like Neil's great, man. Neil's one of my dudes for sure. I love Neil Sean. I think everybody loves Neil Sean. That's not really that that creative of a thing to say. <laughs> I also like cheeseburgers and pizza, right? Like shocker, right? <laughs> That's, uh, so okay. Um, last little bit of housekeeping. Go to patreoncom slash music if you want to support the channel. Five bucks a month helps keep things going. And, uh, of course we have higher tiers for lessons and, and, and things like that. So, um, I'm going to actually going to dig into that tomorrow. I got to do some taxes this weekend. It sucks. Shh, just dreading it. And, uh, outside of that guys, I'm going to put on some, uh, music and work on the studio and try to get things cleaned up. That's, I, I, I've got to do some manual labor around here. So with that said, hope everyone has a great week. Be blessed. Patreon members, I'll be uploading uh, content this week. So, you know, we'll see you guys real soon.